First of all, Matt Turley would like to apologise. Sorry. We put out a film with him a couple of weeks ago shooting over pig pens and he said in it that he would take anyone out crow shooting for £20 as long as they brought their own cartridges. My email inbox was absolutely overflowing in the past two weeks that I've had over 2,000 emails with regards to people wanting to come here shooting with me. So Which is very nice. Um, it is, yes. You can't get back to all of them. I can't, unfortunately, no. You know, we're, we're fully booked now right the way through until the end of September. But I, I, I will get back to everybody with some future dates or possibly now 2021. <laughs> 2000 and I think it's quite a <laughs> It could be, yes. <laughs> it might take a little while for you to come shooting. The good news for dyed-in-the-wool crow shooters is that despite the hammering he gives them, there are still plenty to shoot at on the pig farm. Yeah, it's just never-ending battle with them this year. One right overhead. Yeah. <laughs> Today we're concentrating on the next door orchard. This is a pork and apple farm. Matt and Nigel put up flappers on poles and have some balanced on the branches. There is a small pattern on the grass next to the orchard to give the birds confidence. And Matt even makes his own decoys. Just dustbin bag, a um, couple of cable ties and a wire peg to put them on. They're not fantastic, but they certainly, you know, they draw the crows in close enough to be able to get a, get a shot. Crow rags. They've been around for a long, long time. Cheap and very effective. The farmer wants the birds kept off the pigs because they feast on expensive pig nuts. He wants them off the orchard for the damage they do, breaking off twigs and the mess they make on the apples, which have to be extra washed before they go to shops. He stretches his hide between two trees. Once we're in it, the corvids start coming in. <coughs> Quite soon, however, Matt's shooting buddy Nigel discovers there's something wrong with his gun. Right there, Bob. Yeah, it's been above my lead today. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. If I'm honest, Charlie, it's never happened before, so... Why you call it above my lead? Why well, it's the wind jamming. He heads off to fix it, leaving Matt shooting solo. And what a shoot it is. Too many. <laughs> Spoilt for choice. Yeah, just couldn't decide which one to, to go for. I think I managed two out of a bunch of 40. <laughs> Not good. 
Nigel comes back with coffee and, crucially, a mended semi-auto. A bit shameful in my fault. Um, human error. Um, I cleaned the gun and I took that bit out, put it down and forgot to put it back in. So the Beretta won't be a Bob Marley anymore, hopefully, um, but time will tell. Coffee is also a good moment to talk about the birds we are shooting. They're crows, jackdaws and rooks. Uh, you've got young crows, obviously this year's hatch. Tails still got the, the young feathers on their necks. The wings have feathered up properly. Um, you can still see as well by the eyes, it's a young bird. And then we have this year's hatch of young jackdaws. Not been out the nest that long on the scale of things. Obviously, Crow's got the white mask to the front of his beak. We find as well with a rook, the beak is a lot longer and a bit narrower. And when I say it's got a white mask up around here. Even during coffee, when we're out in the open, birds come over. Yeah. That works. <laughs> Definitely works. <laughs> Working. It's been another stunning day, and there is one more job to do. Among the 2,000 emails Matt has had are questions about the kit he uses. We have tried to answer these on this film's page on the fieldsportschannel.tv website, so go and have a look at that. One popular question is about steel shot, which Matt uses because it is cheap, and he says effective. Nigel shoots lead. It's not a very scientific test. We put two empty cartridge boxes out onto the track. Just going to test steel shot against lead shot. Uh, got two cartridge boxes on the floor at 55 yards and just see which one's got more energy, basically. It's just the distance that one of the furthest crows has fallen this morning. So you just want to see which, which performs better. And is this going to be a test of the test of penetration? Is this also going to be a test of accuracy? <laughs> test of luck, I think, more than accuracy. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, again, we're also going to find out exactly what size choke is in your barrel because you don't know, do you? We haven't got a clue, no, <laughs> no, not at all. Gone in and come out. So mine is the same. Gone in come and out. come out. Now yours have come out in a sort of quite a punchy, deformed sort of way. Have yours come out in the same? Yeah, no, more or less the yeah. same way. I would, I would say that shows greater energy at 55. You look at the way the paper is Impact. sort of... Yeah, the way it's really ripped open. Would you say that? Yeah. There you have it. Both can shoot to 55 paces. Lead is still punchier when it gets there. Matt sums up the day and thanks the wind gods for helping disguise the sound of the shots from the incoming Corvids. You no, know, the wind plays a big part in it. Obviously a still day, the shot travels for a long way. On a windy day, obviously it doesn't. Yeah, and uh, of course, windy day was meant shooting pretty spectacular, really. It? <laughs> it did, yes. Some of those were very testing, especially when if you missed them with the first shot, your second shot had to be a real quick catch up. And if you've emailed him, he will get back to you. Please be patient.